Okay, now the meeting is being recorded. Welcome to the Semitel County Code Site Design Review Committee meeting. The Design Review Committee has established and the zoning regulations is appointed by the Board of Supervisors. Today is Thursday, December 8th, and now is 1.33 p.m. This hearing consists of one project. This meeting is being audio recorded. There are two opportunities for the public to speak, including uh, oral communications from, for matters not on the agenda and a separate public comment session for each project on the agenda. Please review the agenda to identify which item you wish to speak on and the time of that item. The chair will open public comment section during, during the public comment period and for uh, each item on the agenda. I will, reach, I, will, I will first read comments received before this meeting into the record. Then I will ask those members of the public who wish to comment to click the raise hand feature to raise, to raise your hand and to speak on this item. Uh, for those joining by the phone, please press start nine to indicate your desire to speak. Please note that members of the public must wait for my prompt in connection with each agenda item before using the raise hand function. For example, you cannot raise your hand at the beginning of the meeting or for, for an agenda item that's later in the meeting. When, <clears throat> when you hear your name or last four digits of your phone number called, I'll prompt you to unmute your account and inform that you may begin speaking. I will then ask you to state your name, address, email address for the record. For those joining by phone, pressing star six will mute or unmute your microphone. The design review committee's decision for item one today, if any, will only be recommendation will only be a recommendation regarding project compliance and not a final decision on the project. The decision of which will take place at a later date. Depending on scale, depending on the depending on the scale and scope of changes, continued projects may be placed on next month's agenda if the revisions are submitted to the county by the end of business day, December 16th, 2022. Applicants should note that continuous letters may not be available by that day and are encouraged to take notes of the committee's feedback. The next Coast Side Design Review Committee's meeting will be held on Thursday, January 12, 2023. Item one on the agenda is uh, the roll call. Katie Costi. Here. Rebecca Katkin. Here. Beverly Garrity? Here. Doug Machado? Not here. Uh, Mark Stackmeyer? Not here. Thank you. Linda Patterson? Here. Thank you. John Statman? Here. Okay. With that, I turn it over to the chair. Uh, sorry for getting it out so late to you, everybody. Um, I actually just barely remembered to be here today um i thought we were on i thought we we're on christmas break um okay so uh hopefully you've gotten this report but um i'll start at the beginning the coastside design review committee um is appointed by the board of supervisors to ensure the new developments are is compatible with physical settings and site and visual character of the neighborhood and provided a platform for neighbors neighborhood residents to communicate their concerns for the community of Montero, Moss Beach, El Granada, Miramar, and Princeton. Um, as uh, we received notice um, last uh, month that the resolution for continuing on um, Zoom, these hearing meetings um, remote, is gonna terminate on 323. I believe that's correct. If I'm wrong, Glenn, let me know, please. Um, um, I'm not sure about the date, but well, I can I can work with internal staff get um get back to ZRC a later date. I'm gonna bring it up again in that in that um new um new news or whatever it is. Okay. Um so just to reiterate all the other <clears throat> the old business um demonstration of of scale and story polls uh that's been um tabled. We wanted to know if there was has been any development. I know it, it, if it's been re, um, if any, if there's been any initiation to get it back on a schedule by okay. you or Camille. So uh, I would just have some uh, general updates for you. So regarding those long range topics, uh, we, our uh, new planning services manager who will be supervising a long range planning section uh, has uh, started uh, with the county uh, earlier this week on Monday. 
And yeah. um, so that we will have some internal discussion about um, those long range planning topics. And now after we have uh, any updates, uh, I will I will uh, I will provide the CDRC members with updates. Okay. Who, who is the new long range planning person? Uh, the the new long range planning manager uh, is Mr. Abrat Singh. Um, he joins us from Santa Clara County. He used to be um, the principal planner uh, who supervised the uh, uh, Lawrence planning section and some other important duties at Santa Clara County. Okay. So, um, am I do I understand correctly then that the it sounds like our March meeting will be virtual and our April meeting will be in person. He was going to clarify that. Okay, yeah, so that will be that will be clarified, and now we will. Uh, we will well, I, I actually have an answer. Hi, it's Camille. Um, Camille. We're going in person starting March, oh. and, and um, be virtual up, you know, up to February. Okay, and then um, I don't think there's been any formal discussion of this on the committee, but. Um, uh, I'll just voice my preference if there's a way to go back to virtual. I think I'm not the only one who feels like that's really effective to be able to share screens and make notes and things like that. Yeah, I agree. I think that this has actually been a much more effective way for us to meet. It's been a lot more collaborative, and I think it's easier for everybody in the public to be able to wow. actually view what we're looking at at the same time and how we're marking things up. And then just from a you know collaborative standpoint on markups, it's a lot easier with Bluebeam. Um, so I would also like to add that if there is, a, if it is something that is just not possible because of the state laws being too yeah. restrictive or whatever, yeah. um, I would like the county to be prepared to have the right equipment for us to do this with projectors. Okay. That's really good feedback. Yeah. The way that the state has written the regulation, if we're doing, um, hybrid, it, it really does complicate things, uh, in terms of like members having to do particular things to be virtual. Um, it, I understand. Would, yeah. yeah, the monitoring itself would be like total, it, it would like cancel out all the benefits. I, I wasn't it's thinking of hybrid actually when I said it, Camille. Sorry, I, I was thinking of remaining uh, virtual, of, right? Or I, I mean, I can, I understand why we can't just remain virtual, but I would just like to put out there that if our committee meetings, could, as part of the long range plan, aim to become virtual. I think that's the direction, you know, industry is moving and it's obviously the government is going to move a little bit more slowly um, and has to get, a, you know, all kinds of approvals. But I feel like um, moving into the future, this is a great way to do these meetings. Yeah, and uh, you know, from an accessibility standpoint. It's not really standpoint, subject to our, so it's a county wide hearing uh format decision that we're all doing in person in March. It's from the county attorney's office because, you know, like I said, the management of a virtual of a hybrid um or even virtual, all virtual meeting um to comply with state regulations would be very, very onerous. So but I totally get the point about the projection. I think we do need to to allow for, you know, markups via blue beam. But I, I can't say that it's really I mean you guys can state what you what you want, but I'm not sure it's it's up to us. I guess what I'm wondering is as far as the management that you're saying that would be onerous, I mean, isn't it something that we're already doing and it's working just fine? Like, how would it be different? Is it just the pit, the, the regulation paperwork to allow us? To I think it's basically like you could only do it like three times a year. It has to be very like carefully, like go. So if we're having a hybrid meeting, you could only like be virtual something like three times a year. We'd have to manage like each person's like number of virtual um, attendances. <laughs> And there's like, there's beyond that. There's like, mm -hmm. there's so much more. And I think you even have to have a hardship and you have to state what that hardship is. And it can't be this kind of hardship. It has to be that kind of hardship. It can't be just like you're on vacation. It has to be like health related. It's it's very onerous. I, I can see how hybrid is onerous, but I think, you know, echoing what Rebecca was saying, we're not suggesting hybrid. We're suggesting that this format that we've been doing for almost three years has been working really well um and i don't think that that's an option i think it either has to it has to be in per, there has to be in person element so what's the level at which these kinds of decisions about how hearings happen 
um, is, is that like a decision made at the supervisor level? Is that who you would? It's made at the county attorney and county managers level. And okay. it has to do with, um, you know, basically our legal protection. Yeah, no, I get that it's not easy and that it could take a long time, but I think that if we can, um, you know, make our voices heard to the right people that maybe we can affect over time. Attorney. Camille, if I, if I can ask you a quick question. Um, I know that we are still, according to the governor, under a state of emergency, and I know there were a whole slew of regulations uh, and laws governing these kind of things that were affected by that, and I'm wondering if this is just a, a reaction to that coming to an end, and I think I, I, I'm, I'm highly, I think that's probably where it's coming from. Am I correct on that, Camille? Probably, but I, I think where it's based in this new regulation is about not everyone having access to Wi Fi, it, uh -huh. it, you know, not everyone being up on like even how to navigate technology. So it, it's, it, you know, maybe under COVID restrictions that, you know, going virtual wasn't necessary evil i mean although none of us really see it as that but i mean there are people who there are some access um challenges with doing things virtually right i just i i know i know a lot of different uh a lot of different things were affected with with kind of temporary yeah go ahead and do that but when the when this is over that's over as well so i, was, I just was kind of wondering if it wasn't the deal here also yeah, I think based on the email that we saw that was notifying us of that change, I think it actually did mention that it was because of the end of the state of emergency, um, yeah. because that's being scheduled for like, you know, the end of February or whatever. So that's why in March it would resume. But yeah, I think it's been interesting to watch all these, all the way the world operates evolve and some of those things become more permanent once they realize that it's possible and sometimes better. Um, hopefully somebody will realize that this, I mean, I understand all the access issues and everything like that and technology, but you know, the same arguments could be made for people having to miss work and transportation and all the different challenges for somebody to be there for an in-person meeting. Um, so it's interesting. Absolutely. So who can you appeal to? Who can we appeal to? I mean, that's a I good point. County attorney. Because, <laughs> because equal access does, does involve uh, transportation and, and time availability as well as the technology. So that, that's a good argument either way. I would start is at the boards and commissions office. So there's the county manager or board of supervisors has a boards and commissions office. And the person who staffs that is Sherry Golistan. Mm -hmm. um, and her email is sgolistan at smcgov.org. Say that again, please, Camille. Um, I can send it to you guys. Okay. Come back to the chair. That was actually scheduled for new business, but thanks for getting it out of there. Um, am I on mute? No. Sorry, I jumped the gun. <laughs> no, no, no. I, it's all right. I mean, it's it's gonna, just something it's, I feel strongly about. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Um, because I think it does work, and I, and I have other, you know, yeah. Um, we're volunteers. Um, uh, demonstration of scales. And... Okay, I'm just catching up to myself. Um, Glenn, you were going to check on. I know we don't have very many um, uh, projects to be heard today and or last or the time before, but well, um, but for a while we were getting hammered and we were going to. Um, ask that it just go no more than four, and you were going to re reply to that. Yeah, so I think this has uh, this was discussed um, at a previous meeting. Uh, but um, so for this topic, um, if we so uh, as you may know, in the past two or three months, we don't have that many projects. But at some point of time, that was back in um, September or August, we had like five projects. So our plan is because it's not uh, very common of having like more than four projects. So in the future, if we have excessive number of projects and uh, I would just discuss with the CDRC members to discuss um, your guys' availability before we finalize the agenda. 
Okay. So I think that's something we'll discuss. Case by case. That's okay. the value for intent. If That's really helpful. Thank you. And you got the long-term planner. I didn't really catch their name, but you can, if you can include that too, Camille, that'd be awesome. Just so we get the spelling. Oh, sure. Definitely. I'll send yeah. that. Uh, CRDC positions. Anybody here of anybody that's interested in a numerous vacant spots or trying to enlist people? That's pretty quiet. Um, uh, and I think we were talking at one time last time, when does the county do their outline? That, so that's the same thing with this long-term planner when they discuss their outline for the upcoming year. Um, Glenn? Yeah, I would just, just, uh, that's right. So uh, regarding those launch planning actually uh, launch planning packs, uh, we were uh, we we're going to um, discuss with our uh, planning manager, the launch planning supervisor, um, internally before uh, we provide the CDRC with an update. Thank you. Um, and then uh, okay, basically. It's so I, um, that's the end of my minutes. And do I, do we want public comment now or after we close this? Uh, the next item on the agenda is discussion of previously established goals for design review reg regulations update, focused mm -hmm. on landscaping and standard. That's the uh, next item before we can have our, our communication session. Okay. Well then, um, does anybody want to approve the minutes as they stand? And second, please, somebody. I, I make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. Thank you. I'll, do, I'll, I'll do a roll call. Um, Linda Patterson? Yes. Approve. Mark Stackmeyer? Yes. Rebecca Ketkin? Yes. John Stetman? Yes. Katie Costi? Yes. Beverly Garrity? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Are we on the design standards part now? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, okay. Let me. So um, while Linda is here, I wanted to get her feedback on the landscaping um, section of the design review standards. Um, so Linda, and for yes. the public, um, the CDRC um, has taken many, many meetings over the past year, I'd say, to uh, provide its feedback on the current design review standards, um, providing feedback uh, during uh, an agendized uh, uh, item on the CDRC's regular meetings. Um, but we didn't want to call the uh, sort of the, the comment finished until we spoke to you, Linda, about the landscaping. Um, so we can just read it. We have um, some time. Glenn, when does the next item start? Was it 2.30? 2.30, two, 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 okay, perfect. Okay, so we do have a little bit of time. So never mind. There, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff here, but we can read it together. Or did you, did you um, if you haven't yet had time to, to study it recently? I have not studied it. Okay, so okay. However, got it. to make it efficient is good for me. Okay, good. Okay, so this section pertains to landscaping, paved areas, fences, lighting, and noise. And it says, while the appearance of new residential structures is of primary importance, ancillary development on a residential site can also have significant visual. Oh, let me read this. Visual impact should be designed carefully to complement a new or remodeled home. Following section provides guidance and standards regarding landscaping, paving, fencing, lighting, and noise. And then it's um, under landscaping, the discussion is that landscaping should complement and enhance the design um, of the home while harmonizing with the overall landscape character. Uh, new landscaping should also harmonize with existing trees and vegetation. Landscaping should not be used in place of other more permanent architectural solutions. Should be used to accent or enhance, but should be used to accent and, or enhance architectural features when developing a landscape plan. Consideration should be given to water availability and functional landscape. Camille? Yeah. Um, 
did Linda know she was going to be doing this? It was on the agenda. It was okay. on the agenda. I'm yeah, just yeah. wondering not... if Linda might be more comfortable taking a look at her copy of the standards, marking it up, and submitting it for discussion another time. Well, well we have a half an hour. Um, that yeah, exactly. Dedicated yeah. to this. So I'd say let's let's just stay with it. I have not looked at it. Um, maybe we go That's through okay. it and then, and then I look at it. You okay. Know. And then we'll go through some of these bubbles too. Okay. Um, so you should look at the function of water provide shade uh, to provide shader screening or to protect uh, privacy as well. And the location species to be selected accordingly is pretty general. For more detailed landscape plan requirements, we need we don't have this, so it's something that if we leave in that we would need to develop it. And I still think it's it's probably something that we should because the coastal. I mean, I, I don't know. I'd like to get your feedback on that because it's like, you know, there's re, there's references, there's sunset books. And there's um, other resources for the climate specific plans that we need for the coast side. Of so there are, are you saying there are? Um, so there is no minimum standard uh, no. document for people to look at? No, okay. not at the moment, no. And we this is adopted, but we do not have those standards. No, I don't think they were developed. Yeah. Um, well, maybe at this point, just take that out. <laughs> take not, it out. Yes, if it's not. Because do you feel like we have enough, like, you know, between the Sunset Magazine and the Climate Zone? I like think that? so. And I think if people do um, hire somebody or look into it, just like they they would for anything that they're doing. I, yeah. I, think, um, I think that what, what has been said is pretty clear. Um, and, then, and then maybe uh, over on the side here, we could look at that. I would just take that out if there is no minimum standard. Yep. So I'm going to say take out. OK, good. Fabulous. And then there's these two graphics. Do this. And I, I think that. those graphics are good. Those have been the graphics yeah. that have been there for yeah. as long as it's been. So. I have to say that a lot of these more modern landscapes Mm -hmm. Modern designs have a lot more linear geometric forms, as you probably know. It's yeah, I think yeah, I think there has to be um, some room for discussion. And uh, let's see, new landscape and harmonies existing trees and natural character of the neighborhood. Landscape does not present a natural appearance. Um, maybe something about. Uh, I think you have to refer back to the, um, where it talks about the architecture when you're when you're talking about that because further up up on that screen what you were already read um, it's it, it should be used to accent or enhance architectural features and that's where that comes into place if you right. have a linear house and the landscaping does reflect it and yeah. Um, Right add here. to it, then that's that's important. Okay. So I, I still think that other thing is okay, that other picture. Yeah. Because for the most part, when there's a strong, this is my experience, and anybody else can can chime in on this, but when there's a strong uh when the house has strong architectural features, um, it does seem like that um uh that uh, person would have a strong um landscape plan that might be linear and it will work. Right. So, okay. I think that's really great feedback, Linda. One thing I would suggest, and I, I can't view the whole screen right now to see if it is captured somewhere already, yeah. but my my opinion at least would be that if if a project does make more sense to have a linear planting pattern, I think that emphasizing that layering is important. Um, I think that that, I don't know, I think that when you're going to have something very linear, if you just have one long line of the same plant and they're all the same height and everything, that that doesn't really soften it quite as much. Um, and so it feels like if it's going to be linear, having layering of texture, size, um, color might be a way to break it up, but still be a linear pattern that's complementary to the more modern style. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. layering. Maybe that'll be discussed more in the standards. Yeah, I think um, for, for me, sometimes, um, I think giving people a general idea, okay. um, rather than 
very specific, just because I've seen in the past where maybe a, a design was strong, but it didn't exactly fit all of the, the needs of the standards. And so it was modified, but originally it, it had um, integrity. So I think um, I want to trust that designer. Um, and then maybe we as, you know, as, as the design review could, maybe what it says in there um, does state it, does, does cover it. I, mean, I guess I'm sort of backtracing because then somebody could say, well, you don't really have it in the language, so we don't have to do it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it could be something that is like, you know, if, you know, for linear designs, or I don't know if we want to even like mention it, but that we could say yeah. that layering is suggested and is, you know, at the discretion of the design review committee for approval. Mm -hmm. If if I can pipe in, do do we need do we need to be that directive? I mean, I. I to, well, to it's me like if we don't have a way to like if somebody comes with a very linear design, and it's not a modern house where it makes sense. We need to, in my opinion, we need to be able to have the leeway to say in this instance that's not applicable because they could say, well, look, it says right here in the standards I can do this. But I, I think we're going. I think um, that if you look at those images. It's yeah. it's suggesting that we have never in, in none of the languages that talk about if an architecture is linear, you could have a linear landscape. So that picture shows this linear drawing is not natural, doesn't work with that land. So I think that kind of covers it. So you think um, basically if somebody does come with a linear pattern and it does suit the project, then we can you know, approve it on a case to, by case basis, but we I don't think, want to necessarily say. Yes that you can do a linear pattern. Yeah, I, I think just landscape does not present an actual appearance, but then we take case by case. If somebody has a strong design, um, most likely they're gonna have a strong landscape because they're really gonna be concerned. Yeah, about I'm fine with that. I, I was misunderstanding that you were suggesting that we could give them verbiage that allows a linear pattern. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't choose to do that. Okay. I think what we have there is pretty good. I like to keep it kind of broad. I, I think there may be a way to do that with standard E. Mm -hmm. um, and just add walkways. Because what we're saying is you can basically follow the retaining wall. Um, and maybe we just say landscaping along retaining walls and walkways is encouraged. The bottom and top of the walls to reduce our apparent height. And, and or, you know, we could add a sentence about walkways to reduce, um, you know. Well, even walkways, I don't know. A lot of people like to do linear plantings along walkways, but it's not really necessary or encouraged. No, it's not. Uh, yeah. But we could, we could, um, encourage the use of plantings along walkways. Oh, I see. And then uh, without saying at the discretion of, um, you know, and leave this image, this, not this. So depending on the um, architectural style, we can encourage them to be less linear, more organic or accept a more linear design. Yeah, um, couldn't we simply say, landscape landscape design will be complementary and you know complementary to the style of the project i, I yeah it's yeah I kind of, um, you know it's, it's really hard to sit here and try to envision everything that could possibly be submitted and make sure we we cover every base i mean i, I don't even know if that's our so function. it's the i think yeah i think Beverly, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of this has to do with like enhancing the home versus enhancing the site. Well, it does say home and then har harmonizing with the overall landscape character of the neighborhood, but it kind of skips out on site. site. Yeah, I mean, we are talking about retaining walls. I think that's the opportunity because that's where we find it most often. Um, even with a modern home, most often the linear landscaping is along the lines of the house. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the the reason um, why I would not suggest complementary, you know, that general statement is because it's we're trying to increase the objectivity, yes, but not be totally ambiguous. My my feeling is that what's what's there under this discussion mm -hmm. uh, kind of covers it. I, I what I have found is that people either do a landscape or they don't. They do one that's um, very negligible. And so then that's when we have to come in and say, talk to somebody, get something that meets standards. And they do, do know what that means, particularly if they hire somebody. Um, so lately, I, Linda, we've had so many um, inappropriately linear landscapes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And yet there it states it right there, you know, it shows those images. I I don't know how, I think that people just don't, um, they don't, they're not giving um, enough credit to the landscape. They do their design and the landscape is kind of secondary. I don't think they're, they're looking at it really as part of the whole thing. And, and that just has to be addressed when they come to design review. Um, I agree. I think it's treated as an afterthought. But the other thing is that not even just with this section, what we're seeing across the board is a lot of projects that come to us as if they have never seen the blue book. Yeah, yeah. So I think that they're just not looking at this at all. <laughs> right, though what I don't wanna see happen is people coming in with a linear landscape that is appropriate and the blue book clearly says, you know, not this. So if we don't counter that in any other way, um, I, you know, we're at risk of being accused of being arbitrary. So then maybe some line about, as, as you said, Beverly, that- um... Just a, an, a line added to E or along walkways, because that's uh, where we find, and we could have, say, walkways and fencing. Um, that's where we find it occurs either appropriately or inappropriately mm -hmm. um, as linear. And then we can use our discretion. We don't have to say to the discretion of. Yeah, I suppose so. I, I hate, I'm just thinking of some designs where they're really strong um, yeah. retaining wall kind of um, structures that just add so much to a property. So I, I just don't want to discourage creative design. Right, I don't think it would because um, because it leaves it open. Mm -hmm. You know, we would like for them to landscape the retaining walls. Yeah. Is what we're saying. We're landscape the walkways, landscape the fence line. Mm -hmm. What Linda's saying is when you have retaining walls that actually add architecture to the landscaping or hardscape that why would you be instructed to bury it with you're not burying it you're just you know considering the landscape and if a retaining wall can stand alone without vegetation uh -huh. and i'm just talking about the select few <laughs> really strong projects that come through that that have those great qualities of design right um, so yeah, I, I don't think this precludes that. It's just I, I don't know that every walkway has to be landscaped. I, I've seen walkways that go through like a sea of mulch with, you know, trees along the back fence or in some um, other plantings. I don't know that walkways have to be like specifically landscaped. I'm not saying they necessarily need to be planted, but they, the, yeah. Yeah, if, if it's, I'm just trying to um, subtly include the exceptions where where they will probably possibly be approved, you know, if it's more linear. I think the CDRC has been basically making those exceptions. I don't know that because uh, I think what well, we uh, have, but then we get accused of not following the blue book. Okay. All right. Um, so, do you want to say landscaping does not should not should present a natural appearance un, um, to the extent feasible or something or to the ex 
extent that it's cons uh, what do you call it compatible or enhancing the architecture? Because I think this was not in the standards, and then we we said put this into the standards because it really only appears in this graphic. Mm -hmm. um, Wasn't there another section uh, in our earlier markups where we basically said something? I think it was relating to building mass, shape, and form, or maybe the architectural style, where we had said um, our suggestion was if you want to deviate from the standards, then basically, you know, I'm summarizing, but basically you need to have a strong design and it would be at the CDRC's discretion. So it still gives us the ability to make exceptions. And obviously that is going to be, you know, if they want to deviate from the standards, then it will be on a case by case basis at our discretion. Okay, well, why don't, in, so that we're not burning time trying to find that note, that's a note that pretty much applies to everything, right? Yeah. yeah. It's in okay. The so maybe so it's let's something just that add like it a general, a at general, the beginning. Yeah. And just I say. It, I think it was. And then summer. basically that can be referenced each time it comes up in any section of the blue book. Exactly. Okay. Let's see that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say discretion um, CDRC has the discretion to deviate. Deviate from or I guess to approve to approve deviations from the to standards. To approve deviations. Can we say minor deviations? Because then this is in the LCP, so it's kind of like you're giving exceptions. We'll just say minor deviations. Okay. Minor deviations from, from the standards that are consistent with the overall design of the project. From this, um, which are consistent with. That, that'll cover it in lots of areas. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. So that will cover us for landscaping as well as many other areas. And then we can go back to landscaping. Did it already say something about screening recommended? What screening recommended? What were yeah. you thinking? I don't know. Like Just for privacy. privacy? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's mentioned when no, we were reading not. it. It says here provide shade or screening or to protect privacy. That part? Yep. Okay. Okay. So shall we start on the standard? Sure. Okay. I think this comment says require landscape plan. Um, prepared according to the county's minimum standards. And I think that we've already addressed that, that we're not going to necessarily use that. But I think we do need to require a landscape plan. And you you had CDRC had commented that we should just state that it's required for new houses. And then I think to Katie's point about the layers and in terms of both plant size and plant colors, that it there should be layers and depth in the design. So that would be added as a standard. Um, and then B is finished landscape plan should be compatible with an enhanced design of the home and the trees and vegetation remaining on the site and in the surrounding neighborhood after construction. That kind of covers the site. Well, it talks about the trees and the vegetation remaining on the site, but not necessarily the site itself. But I think if we cover it here, I think maybe it's okay. Um, anyone chime in if you have an edit, then C. C is tree removal and replacement shall be in accordance with section 51, 65, 65, standards for tree production, replacement trees, and new trees shall be from the list specifying recommended discouraged species of the mid coast, which we will do not have. Um, native and drought tolerant species are what is it? Encouraged. So I think we I think we said delete native sentence as it's in section I, I F. All landscaping includes trees. So we already discussed this native part. So we'll just do drought tolerant maybe. That where we oh even drought tolerance discussed. So maybe we could just get rid of this entire sentence. 
since it's already covered. Um, I don't see why you just leave it in <laughs> because it just gives more opportunity for people to read it and yeah, that's true. And know okay. that that's what they're supposed to do. Should we say required instead of encouraged? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Drought tolerant. I mean, that's a that's, that's a big, required now. Big yeah. area. So. Um. So I'm gonna say required, not encouraged. Okay. Okay, D, finished landscape plans shall include provisions for watering plants as needed to ensure initial plant growth. This, this is something that I was curious about because it's like everyone's doing like the hand watering to get around Willow, Linda, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. um, so what is this provisions for watering plants? I mean, I always think that like, how do you know if the CDRC approves a plant there, but they're only hand watering, how do you know it's not gonna die? Um, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna last. So do, this is a biggie, you know, if we're gonna require people to put in irrigation, um, th then everything's gonna trip Wheelow. Mm -hmm. And this could add cost to the project. Yeah, yeah. I don't think to consider can... is what people do after their building final. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like there's a lot of great xeriscaping that can happen that doesn't require irrigation and I wouldn't wanna, well, just as watering plants, it doesn't say you have to do. Plants. You're not suggesting we require the installation of irrigation. Well, just as include provisions for watering plants. So if it's zero scaping, you wouldn't water the plants. I mean, there would I be guess, no plants. I guess I'm. I thought you were saying that if we required irrigation systems, that would prevent people from saying they're hand watering to get around Wheelo, which I understand. But I think yeah. also people who are legitimately installing drought tolerant landscapes who shouldn't have to be forced to install an irrigation system if they if those are plants that only need to be watered until maturity and then don't require watering and it does say drip irrigation are encouraged where appropriate mm -hmm. so that's kind of leaving it open for that um because there are a lot of plants that, as you said once mature, I think we deleted it I mean, certainly if there's irrigation, drip irrigation, you know, the least water intensive irrigation is going to be recommended over spraying or yeah. you know, overhead. Um, I just don't think we should push people into having to have irrigation. Um, I just, I guess my point is, is like, why are we going over the plant planting plan and requiring it final and doing all this um, work around these plants when they could all die six months from now and there would be no plants around this house? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I, sus I, I suspect that what people are doing, if they have plants that require irrigation, is that they're saying they're going to hand water to get around Willow, and then they're installing irrigation later, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think that to deal with those people, we should like penalize the people who are actually installing appropriate drought tolerant landscapes. Okay, that's what you're saying. Um, should we put that they just have should be maintained? Plants should be maintained instead of watered. That's an interesting idea. Okay. Shall be. Is that okay? Because we we do need something like this. Um, And I think we we deleted drip irrigation systems because it's like, you know, however you qualify under WELO, um, using however, what, however, whatever systems you propose is, you know, it's going to meet WELO. So what, why do we have to be so prescriptive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think because like you mentioned, Camille, people are basically suggesting hand watering to avoid WELO so then they don't end up having to do that. Yeah, but drip irrigation versus spray irrigation versus, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, it's like prescriptive in that sense. And if they're yeah. required to maintain the plants, then I think that covers those. Yeah, related to that, uh, this goes back to something that you mentioned a few meetings ago that was a surprise to me, um, and it relates to this as well. So I know that you had told us that 
basically if somebody goes back and paints their house five years later and they paint it outrageous colors that are that do not meet the guidelines um that that is still enforceable is yeah. that correct so would, wouldn't the yeah. same thing apply to um landscaping and planting like i'm a little confused because those things that are done after the fact don't require permits and it relates to a project that had planning um complaints recently um i don't remember the exact address of it but it's on i think it was on vallejo like 100 vallejo or something like that that had those big palm trees that were added after the permit was closed out and then we were hearing that basically well we can't do anything about it at this point because the permit has been closed out so i'm i'm very confused as to what is um still enforceable after permits are closed out versus what's not and that relates to this saying that plants shall be maintained for the life of the project because that's obviously that's explicitly saying, you know, you've got to keep the plants alive that were in your application. And I don't know, you know, somebody would basically have to make a complaint, but it's yeah. unclear to me. And I think unclear to the general public about which things like people who just bought a house and never went through a design review, they probably would go paint their house and have no idea that there's guidelines that they're supposed to follow. Right. Yeah. It, they're typically, I mean, we, we obviously things are easier to enforce if they're under a permit. So if someone just goes and paints their house that doesn't require a permit, and it's much harder for us to go back and enforce that as like a work that wasn't where a permit wasn't required. Um, but I think that we do have the um, regulations, the authority to pursue the enforcement. And then, but then there's also like, okay, does it rise to a level of priority? And um, I like, for example, um, there was that's a palm tree example. Was that added to the landscape plan? No, so, it was added. My understanding is that it was added after no, the, right. after everything was finaled, and then they had right. also added that little like arbor gate thing. And I think one of the reasons that it had become a planning complaint was because of the visibility issue at that corner. Okay. So again, it's one of those things that somebody made a complaint, and so it you know was brought to someone's attention. But what we heard, and I think it was when Ramel was still with us, was that you know they can plant whatever they want. After the permits are they can plant with whatever they want, but they can't rip out stuff that was approved. They can add to it, but they can't take away, um, or they shouldn't, because that's enforceable. Because it's in the building permit, it's stamped. It says that they would plant, you know, all this stuff, but it mm -hmm. doesn't. It doesn't prohibit them from planting more. Yeah, so that's why all this stuff feels a little bit like, you know, unclear gray area to me. Like, when can you repaint if the paint colors were part of a, a permit and you know when can you request that somebody has to maintain something for the life of the project like by that same token would it say that like people have to maintain the, the color that was in the planning approval or something i'm not suggesting that's what we should do but it just feels like a very unclear slippery slope and then at the same time i haven't actually seen the county enforce anything for any projects the whole time i've been on this committee we've seen we've brought complaints we haven't seen anything done about anything like everybody that's, says that's okay, really we're i don't think that's true at all katie but i mean we give you updates on how we're enforcing some of the violations that you guys have brought to our attention so i don't i don't think that's true and well i guess just from the ones that we've that we've had come up in our discussions i haven't ever heard of Correction. That's not true. Course. That's not true. There was one where I worked on. I mean, I'm not going to get into it right now. We're talking about landscaping. So um, if you want, you and I can talk about that and I can give you some examples. But um, let's, let's go back to landscaping, um, if we could, since we have a 2.30. Um, let, can we let's just go to E. Um, landscaping along retaining walls is encouraged using planted areas along the bottom and top of walls to reduce the apparent height and blend with the natural surroundings. So this is like specific to, to kind of um, making those retaining walls kind of softening, I guess, softening and screening the retaining walls, which I think is still good, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All landscaping should be drought tolerant and either native or non-invasive so i think it i think we want native and non-invasive right yes okay mm -hmm. this is a big and um no plant species listed as problematic or invasive by the california native plant society the california invasive plant council or as may be identified from time to time by the state from time to time but by the state of california shall be employed are these still the relevant of uh, authorities, Linda? You know, I, I don't know. You have to be 
very specific because some of them it's for Southern California, you know, as opposed to here. Um, so there has to be some wiggle room because okay. something that is is invasive in other areas will not be here or vice That's versa. True, listed as problematic regionally. Yeah, in our region. Yeah, that would be good. Mm -hmm. Problematic at um, in our region. Okay. Um, okay, perfect. Um, no plant species listed as a noxious weed by the state of California, U.S. federal government shall be utilized within the property. The requirement for drought tolerance landscaping shall not apply to fruit or vegetable gardens, which is the case with Willow anyway. Um, a smooth transition between development and adjacent open areas shall be maintained through the use of landscaping and materials which are native or appropriate to the area. That's pretty general. And then we deleted utilized vegetated swells at uh, bioretention basins to aid in the treatment of stormwater and dry weather runoff where appropriate. Um, I mean, we could add this in, but it more has to do with drainage than landscaping. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and I think the CDRC has been sort of reticent about uh, overseeing drainage since that's reviewed by the county drainage section. Yeah, I think that's good because then okay. we don't have to worry about that. Okay. It gets complicated. Yeah. So I think that's it for landscaping. This more has to do with paved areas. And fencing and lighting. And so I think that might be it. There might, let me see if there's anything that pertains, other sections that might pertain to landscaping. Additional site considerations. Okay. I forgot the extension cards. Yeah, Linda, if you, if you read, mm -hmm. If you want to, if you see something else in terms of these standards that needs changing, okay. um, you can bring it up at the. You know. I'll reread it. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you have time. If not, I think what you, you what we talked about is good. Okay, great, awesome, so fabulous saving. Great. Well, we are done with that portion of the agenda. Um, let me figure out how to get back to Zoom. Oh, stop sharing. Great, five minutes to spare. Do we want to? Yeah. So the next do a, uh, a little break till oral communications. Even when oh, we that's right. Just oh, the process. Hey, Mark. Um, as Thanks for holding on to that, Camille, until uh, Linda could be with us. No problem. Thank you. I'm, I'm Thanks. glad we finally got Linda's feedback. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. What are you saying, Glenn? Oh, hey, Mark, would you like to open for oral communication session? Well, um, yeah, open the floor to oral communications for any, but any members of the public that would like to speak on any items uh, not on the agenda. Okay, uh, we are now opening public comments for oral communications for matters not on the agenda. If your hand is raised, your name will be called uh, for this item. I will lower your hand after you speak. Those shining by telephone can press start nine to raise and now raise your hand. Pressing star six will mute or unmute your microphone once you're given permission to speak. Okay, uh, Chair, I don't see any uh, raised hands. Um, please indicate if you would like to close a public comment. I'd like to close public comment. Okay, thank you. And the next item on the agenda is our first project, and now the review will begin at uh, 2.30 p.m. Uh, take a couple I'm, going, I'm going to bid you all farewell. I've got uh, another meeting I've got to be in in 15 minutes, so. Bye, John. Bye, Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I'll be right back. And now the applicant um, for, uh, of item one, Mr. Paul McGregor is here. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Glenn. I think Karen is the designer. So if you see her, 
Okay. No, I. Uh, no. Gregor is the only person in the. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Hi, Paul. Hi. Um, just uh, for your information, I believe Karen may not be able to join the meeting today. She has some uh, family matters she has to deal with. Okay, so it would be the uh, only person representing the, the, the project? Uh, that would be me. Okay, we'll be back uh, in two minutes. No problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did you work with Barat at the County of Santa Clara? Oh, me? Yeah. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I worked with him at that time. He Oh, I didn't put that I didn't put that together until just now when you were when you were kind of giving him giving us his background. Yeah. Yeah, oh, cool. There, and, um, I was mainly working on uh, the uh, the current planning side, and um, he was the principal planner supervising the um, Orange planning section at that time. He's oh, very wow. cool, and um, he's pretty tax savvy. And um, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure he's a great addition to our team. Oh, great! Maybe in a, like a week or two, let's set up a meeting with him. I'm meeting with him for just a half an hour this Friday, and I'm going to introduce the subject of our three um, design review long range projects with him. Um, and then um, maybe set up a meeting with him a couple weeks after to give him like. Um, describing the project and now reading the project. Information. Okay. All right. So owner applicant, Paul McGregor, file number PLN. 2021-00101, location Alto Avenue, Miramar, accessors parcel number 048065-060, consideration of a design review recommendation to allow the construction of a new two-story, 1,590 square foot single family residence with an attached 418 square foot garage and 800 square foot Accessory Dwelling Unit, ADU, on a legal 4,800 square foot parcel, Certificate of Compliance, PLN 2016-00476, associated with a Coastal Development Permit, CDP, and a Non-Conforming Use Permit, UP. A UP is required to allow development on a less than 5,000 square foot parcel, where 10,000 square uh, feet is the minimum lot size in the S-94 combining district. The project involves minor grading for the residents and approximately a 73 foot road, uh, feet road extension of Alto Avenue and no tree removal. The CDRC will not render a decision, but will make recommendation regarding the project's compliance with the de design review standards. The ADU is a ministerial project that does not require reviewed by the CDRC. This project was scheduled for continued consideration from the August 11th, 2022 meeting. A hearing before the Planning Commission on the DR, CDP, and UP will take place after December 8th, 2022. The project is not appealable to the California Coastal Commission application deemed complete November 2, 2022. Project planner, Camille Leong, uh, C. Leong at smcgov.org. Okay, so now we uh, start with, um, uh, do I open it first to public comments? Oh, no, the, uh, the next step is uh, for the applicant uh, to des describe the project and maybe like okay. a presentation. And now after that, we can open for public comments. And now after the public comment session is closed, that now that we will allow uh, the CRC to have uh, internal discussions. Okay. So uh, Paul and McGregor, would you like to start? Just tell yes. us what you've done. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, based upon the comments were made at the last meeting, uh, we incorporated an ADU and we did some projections into the setbacks to, uh, 
to get rid of the long lineal lines. Um, there's been some siding changes, some window changes, um, pretty much to break up the mass on the sides. And I think that's where she's taken it to at this point in time. I hope everybody is okay with it. And I look forward to your comments. Okay. That's short and sweet, huh? That's good, that's good. Um, and do we have any uh, public comment? Uh, so before before public comments, um, yeah. we, I, we we need to find now whether um, the uh, architects, Katie and Rebecca has any questions before we can open up for public comments. Okay, and I also have a couple of questions. You yeah. want to start, Linda? Okay, yeah, um, I, I just was curious, um, Paul, the doors for the entry, um, did you have a design for those? Uh, the actual physical doors themselves? Yes. You know, it would go along with the same style of the house, um, somewhat of a craftsman style. Okay, so you're controlling screen now? Who's controlling the screen? Um, yeah, I am. I'm trying okay. to find the elevation. Okay. So, um, were you looking at these doors? I was. Those okay. two. I just was curious if there was any style because you didn't call it out. So I'll just keep moving on. Paul, how would what, what kind of craftsman door? I mean, would it just be kind of a door with a trim or? Yeah, you know, if you look at the, the garage, I would I would imagine that the upper panes would be uh, similar to something like that. Maybe not quite the same, but somewhere along that manner. Huh. Okay. They, they wouldn't be flat blank doors. That, that would be terrible. Okay, okay. I'm going to I'm going to keep going with my comments. Um, I had a, a couple of suggestions for plants over your the arbor over the garage, if you'd like them. And then I also in, so for all of you, I did um, consult with Paul and I gave him a list of plants and suggested uh, uh, suggested placement for the plants. And one thing that is not added, I do wanna say that when you do order the plants, use my list, Paul, because the list that you submitted here um, has so many type, there's so many spelling mistakes that um, you wouldn't want to go into a landscaper with that. Okay. I'll, I'll so definitely. I, it was just, it was just funny. Um, uh, and it's really important to, to make note of the right uh, variety of plant so you don't get the wrong color. Um, I had suggested a Julia Phelps, um, and that is a Ceanothus. I had suggested Ceanothus on that, the, um, on the uh, east side retaining wall because it's going to cascade down. And I don't see that you put that in. And also a Julia Phelps, um, it's a Ceanothus, but it's a specimen, it's a tree for the very front. Um, so if we go to that landscape the right there, um, as we're looking at this, the right side um, or the east side of the project, um, I had thought that a, a Julia Phelps within there, because all of those plants that you have in there are low, low growing. You have a tree on the, the left side, an existing cypress tree, but on this side, it's a specimen plant. So it will only get to about six feet or so, but it grows broad, it's purple. So it's gonna match some of the other colors that you suggested. And I think it would really add to the house. Um, the other thing- I'm, I'm Say that? I, I said I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, yeah. The other thing I was just, and this is just something I was looking at. Um, it seems as though there's a path on the right that leads, and this is not on this screen that we're looking at. It just leads to um, a little bit along that side, east side wall. It does, there's no way to access the back. And I just thought for convenience, you might want to consider pavers or something so that someone could enter through the front and, and go to the back. Um, well, my thought, since you brought yeah. that to attention, is that uh, I would like to be able to access, access that area to the back from that side, but I think also a secondary entrance for the upstairs would probably be appropriate in that area too. Mm -hmm. This way, you know, when I'm grading and, and so forth, 
I can grade it to uh, do stairs, steps, or whatever going up that way. Um, it's just a thought. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I I just thought for for convenience' sake, there was no way to get to the back, and that's um, especially for the ADU because that if if it is a shared home with somebody they know, they won't ever have access to the yard. Um, hillside. Okay, so the hillside with the ceanothus, I think, would would work really well. Doors for entry. I think that was that was everything. I mean, you're you're showing some of these plantings, um, but you can you can work it out. Some of them look a little dense. Um, it's hard for me to to depict it, but um, the uh, dodonea is that dark dark plant along the rear. Um, yeah, uh, go back, go back a little bit. Not that one, but the one right in front of it, um, right there. Yeah, the that dark plant is a dodonea, which is the hot book bush. You definitely want to get the purpurea. Um, you're just saying dodonea in your your plan because that's the purple one. Um, and then the 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 shrub that or tr small tree that's in the center of that is the um, podocarpus, and so you may not have that many. Um, I'm just telling you that it's a lot of them. It's got to look good. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, I I personally think you did a good job. I like. I'm just telling. Um, I liked uh, the features, the siding. Um, I thought it looked like a good project. Um, I did. Okay. So the other the, one last thing though, the back there's the patio and um, the shrubs. That one wall by the back door just looked awfully plain to me. Um, the slider in the back that accesses that patio. We can definitely cover some of that stuff once we get into the. Okay, these are just the, those are the only things I was going to talk about. So that was the, and that's my two cents. And now the architects can talk. Do you want to go first, Jennifer? Uh, oh my gosh, Rebecca. Whoever I am. <laughs> I only really, I think I only have one clarifying question which has to do um, with the new volume extending out to the sides. So you mentioned in your introduction, Paul, that that's going into the setback. Um, so are you requesting a variance now in order to build in the setback? or um, And maybe Camille can weigh in on, on what discussions you guys had along the way? I believe that's Camille's uh, question. And I also thought uh -huh. that I saw that, that it was calling out a 10 foot setback on both sides. So if you could um, clarify that, Camille, that would be great. Yeah, the use permit would cover any encroachments. So there is a 10 foot setback for most of the house, but there are, these would meet a five foot setback. So they would need um, coverage under the use permit. So I guess I thought, and was the use permit already being applied for when we saw this before? Yeah, because it's a substandard lot. I so see. It's required. And so wouldn't the usual setback be five feet minimum, but totaling 15 between the two sides? It's 10, it's 10 in the zoning district. Yeah, okay. this one's not a 17. Yeah. Okay, what's our zoning district? Um, oh, what? S -S what am I blanking on it? S let me see if it's here. <clears throat> Paul, do you know? Anyway, I can look it up. Let me look it up. It's okay. I just I was I was making S seventeen assumptions probably because that's just what most of the area we cover. S ninety four. It's in the agenda. S94. Okay. So yeah. so what we saw previously was conforming to the ten foot setbacks, but was already requesting a conditional use permit just because it's a substandard lot. That's right. That's right. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. Um, okay, I've got uh, just a couple of clarifying questions. I just wanted to confirm, since we do have two different landscape plans that are in there, and they're not quite coordinated, um, mm -hmm. which one is the intended dominant landscape plan? I think there's like two landscape plans in this. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, there's that, one that's on my page, point. There's one on page 11, and then there's the one that's hand-drawn. That's on like page 29, I think. On page, page 31. 31. Yeah. I, I, um, that was the original. And yeah, they, they don't seem to match. That, okay. That, this is the original landscape plan, the one that okay. you're looking at now. Okay. The one with the dark, and that's his newest, and that refers that's to what's being my, proposed. My today. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Got it. 
Um, so just, um, Linda, if you're taking notes on, on what needs to be captured from this meeting, yes. I want to just make a point that those last two sheets, 30 and 31, need to be removed okay. from, um, from the set. Um, another question that I had was about the back patio. Um, you can tell from this drainage plan right here, it looks like there's a patio, and then I believe there's a couple steps leading down to it. Is, is that correct? Is that a question for me? Yep. Uh, it, it can be. It, it all depends on how it grades out at that time. And I, I can always build it up a little to get up closer to the uh, level of the, uh, the the back door right there. But, you know, that's that's a grading thing. As I'm in construction, I, I make tweaks here and there. Okay, but it, because I, it, I see it detailed a little bit in the section, which is great. And then there's like the concrete pad that I assumed as pavers would be on. Um, looking at that rear elevation view again, if you scroll up a bit, Camille, just the same sheet. Um, the right side of that is is high enough that it would require a guardrail. Correct. Um, and I don't see one shown, so I, I just wanted to clarify if you knew that that was going to need one or if you were planning on doing something different with the grading there, obviously we need to have that captured in these drawings accurately. I, I, I would anticipate that that area would be, wouldn't be any taller than 18 inches. Well, from the plans right now, um, like about three feet, it's over three feet. Yeah. 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 So if, if need be, I would, I would be putting a guardrail in, but yeah, I, th I, those are things that we need to work out in this stage. Okay. Well, well let's call it a guardrail at this point in time. Okay. Um, so would that, would you want to have that wrap the entire patio for consistency or just on the sides where it's a fall hazard? I would say the, the tall side and the uh, side for this yeah. back would make most sense. Okay. So the, uh, the west and the uh, north side. Okay. And then, yeah, I had the same questions that Linda did about the door specifications. Um, we can come back to that a little bit more. I think that's all I have for clarifying questions. Okay. Okay. Alina, would you like to open for a public comment? Yes. Um, is there any public comment on this project? Okay. Uh, Perry Chair, we're now opening public comments for item number one. No correspondence was received prior to this meeting uh, for this item. I will ask those members of the public who wish to comment to click the raise hand feature to raise your hand to speak on this agenda item. I will, I will lower your hand after you speak. Those joining by telephone can press star nine to raise your hand and I'll raise your hand. Pressing star six will mute or unmute your microphone once you're given permission to speak. I don't see any raise hands for those on Zoom. Are there any other persons who wish to speak on this item, item number one? If so, I'll provide a few more seconds in case there are others who would like to raise their hand to speak on this item. As a reminder for those joining by telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. Linda, uh, I don't see any raise hands. Uh, please, okay. if you would like so, to. So then we can close public comment. Okay. Thank you. And the next step is for um, CDRC's discussion. Okay. All right. So, architects, do you want to? Um, I, I gave my yeah. little bit. So. Well, I want to say, first of all, I, Paul, I just want to thank you. I feel like this is a really considered response to the comments that we made before. Um, and I think that, um, I don't know if we have that list here, but in terms of, you know, roof forms and articulation, I feel like, because um, we should really only be talking about the things we mentioned there, right? So building mass, shape and scale. Uh, I do want to just say, I, I think there are a couple other things that we need to talk about that are new architectural elements. That are new, right, because there are yeah. some changes. Right. Um, so the main thing I think that I kind of want to chat with, with the community about is the um, this new rotated volume that's extending out further into the setbacks. Um, if Katie, if you have sort of other architectural things you want to bring up, why don't we start with those? Um, sure. So just related to the patio that I was just discussing, um, knowing that there would be a guardrail needed, uh, my inclination would be that it would look a little bit odd for it to not wrap the whole patio, but I, I get that it's also going to kind of screen you from the, the landscaping in the back. So I wanted to see what uh, the other committee members thought, because we also would obviously need some kind of a guardrail specification that we are all on board with. 
Well, and I and Paul was saying that yeah, he would opt for the guardrail, but we also the alternative would be to change the grading so that it was just within eighteen inches of the ground. Yeah. 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 So if he did do that, um, I think it would uh, it would require the retaining wall. Um, Camille, can you go to sheet A21, please, for the, the rear elevation? Because right now that's showing as a three foot high retaining wall based on those civil plans. It's uh, sheet 22, I think. Sheet 22, thank you so much. Okay. So if you zoom in on that Northwest elevation, If you want, I can drive. Too. Trying to zoom. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, so, I mean, if the patio was brought down some, obviously that's going to increase the grading a bit. That retaining wall would need to get a little bit taller and you'd need more steps down. But I think that that would end up probably being aesthetically a better space. I don't know what your thoughts are. And, you know, if uh, Paul has any thoughts are, on that you, as well. Are you suggesting more steps to get down to the patio if I lower it down? Yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Is there any issue, Camille, from a grading standpoint, for them to do additional grading for that patio to be lower? It's not going to put us into an. Let's look at the civil plan really quick. Also, I mean, we don't have to dictate that. We could we could make the condition, you know, something like either to update the grading to keep it within eighteen inches of the grade, or we can go ahead and have a discussion about what kind of guardrail we would be satisfied with, so that Paul does have the. Flexibility. The yeah, these civil plans are not accurate. They haven't been updated. I know it has a wood deck instead of a paver and a lot more steps, yeah. and it doesn't have the transverse gable footprint either. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, good point. Oh, I asked her for updated. Sorry, I should have caught that. Damn it. Um. So then the grading Paul. quantities would be different anyway. So that um, they're not proposing grading other than this big retaining wall. I mean, this is different. This is from the old design that had like the overhang yeah. at the garage and yeah. we would suggest that it's stepped design. So the footprint and everything has changed quite a bit from a civil standpoint. Paul, the, the drawback between for not updating your civil plan for the current design is that I hope you don't go over 250 because if you do, it triggers a grading permit and then you're you're still stuck in planning. I don't um, anticipate on going further, but you know that's that's going to be calculations done by Sigma Prime. Okay, so I need final calculations um, before we go to the planning commission. Okay. I need a final civil plans with final calcs. Um, I think he held off from doing a final civil plan until we had this hearing, because otherwise he'd be changing it, you know, one, two, maybe three times. Well, I, I mean, know. that's normal. That's kind of goes with the territory. But yeah. um, what we need to know now, I mean, sorry, what should be considered in, I don't know, if it, if it makes it as a, as a recommendation to the CDC, which it sounds like it will, is uh, kind of what flattening this area. Yeah, wh whichever direction you end up going, if you decide to keep the level as is in the architectural plans and have a guardrail, or if you want to make that lower and increase the height of the retaining wall and increase the grading, that may be something that you end up, that decision might be guided for you based on your grading totals. I agree. Um, but that said, Paul, are you open to, I mean, what, what is everybody's thoughts on the guardrail wrapping the whole patio? Because half, half of it would be kind of strange, right? Well, I, I, would, I would consider that the east part which actually ends up you know level with the ground that that would be a way that they can get into the yard so instead of wrapping it all the way around you know the two sides would make more sense to me uh your side the east side being the side with the retaining wall uh well it's, there's a retaining wall yeah exactly because uh, the the patio at least in the uh the elevation shows it's pretty much level with the land right there well, Maybe. it's not really. There's there's a retaining wall. So if you did have access from that side, then you're going to have steps from the higher grade down to the patio. So in this case, we should probably look back at the architectural because this isn't accurate for the current design. There you go. And you can look at the section or the rear elevation. Any of those should work. I think the rear elevation. There we go. So, so if anything, steps, you know what, if you had steps on the low side, on the west side, that might be better because you're going to step up and you have less guardrail then. Can, I can do it either way. I mean, I, I'm looking at the way the elevation is right now. I mean, it looks like they've got that area cut. 
from the retaining wall to end up uh, level with the patio in the back. Right, but it's a three foot retaining wall according to civil. Right, which no, doesn't look accurate on these. And yeah, because that's a different plan. So I, I go with handrails or, or steps either way. Uh, is the committee comfortable with this being open ended from a design standpoint? I'm comfortable with letting him, you know, have it open ended whether it's whether the solution is grading or or railing. But if it is a railing, do we want to define is it a wood rail? Is it a cable rail? Is it the hog wire? Like, do we want to? I, I, I style works. That wood rail with two two inch pickets, four inches on center. Yeah, so I see there's a detail that's called out, but it's not included in the set. But if you look at the section, uh, sheet 24, there is a railing that's shown. Uh, and so, Paul, I'm sure you understand that the complication is that the drawings, there it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever is approved today by the committee, if that's what happens, what's well, shown in the drawings, unless um, we specify otherwise in, in whatever I, letter. It has to be accurate and because this is what I, it's going to be. The project will be held to that standard aesthetically. I, I see the railing. I think that railing is mainly probably for the stairs going down. But it does right. look like but what you'd you have described. the same. You'd have the same kind of railing for yeah. the guardrail. I'm assuming. Yep, I would. I would state according to that. So is this aesthetically what you're going for for your railing? Yeah, I, I, I'd be all right with that. Something. I'm all right with that. That looks like pretty standard. I, I am too. Okay. So. So we'll, um, so we're going to use the railing on. Uh, what page was that? That that, that railing was twenty four. Twenty four. Okay. Railing. Okay. okay. And so, I well, uh, yeah. Let's see. So one question for the committee, um, Camille, can you go to sheet A two point one, please? And again, if you want, I can drive. A2.1, okay. So um, for me, a gable is typically an architectural feature and has some sort of fenestration on the gable end. So the blank gable was a little problematic to me. I understand from a floor plan standpoint that those spaces, you know, you've got a walk-in closet and a laundry room. Um, it did look to me like there's the opportunity for the window that's on the side of the gable in the laundry room to go to the front of the gable. Um, and it would be asymmetrical, which I'm okay with, because from a gable standpoint, you can even see on that northwest elevation, if you scroll up just a bit, Camille, that that's asymmetrical also. But I think that that would probably be helpful if that window was moved from the side of the gable to the, the face of the gable. How about two smaller windows so it looks somewhat symmetrical? Um, are you thinking like transoms? Well, like like uh, two two by two windows or something along that line, same width as the other ones. But up higher, I think one area is the laundry room, the other is a closet. Yeah, the closet is the one that's a little more problematic. I mean, the the window that's shown on the elevation for the laundry room, let me go to that elevation. Probably uh, three, that three. one, it honestly, it would probably, you'd see the washer through the window, like the sill height is too low anyway. So that window probably should become a two by two. What about, um, so the, the primary Eve has at the front and the back, is that a, a vent detail that we're seeing? Right yeah. On the bridge? I mean, would just adding something like that do it for you? You're right, looking at the opposite side now that you've scrolled, the Camille scrolled down and we see the gable with the window, that does look a little. Yeah, more, and more. I mean, the gate, the windows on that southeast elevation, you can see that the windows in the side of the gable are pretty large for, you know, proportion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the one that's on the upper right, that's the one that's in the laundry room. That's the one that I would suggest changing to a two by two, like the one that's below it, but moving it to the gable front. And then the wall's right down the center, right? We can't put something in the center. Right. Um, yeah, so that that was my suggestion, just that that gable, I do appreciate the, artic the articulation that's added, but I feel like it's a little bit awkward because the windows are placed on the side rather than the face of the gable. Um, you know, and there's always a bit of back and forth between plan and exterior. Um, so we can't, I don't really know that we can do much in the walk-in closet unless you decide to, you know, remove a little bit of the hanging space opportunity in there. You know, if, if we did two two o two os and they're held up um, header height, you know, so they're only dropping down two feet, I don't think it would interfere too much with the uh, closet or the washroom. 
And then okay. also, I may suggest that we put the same type of vet detail up above as we have in the front. Yeah, I think that would be good. So we would want to do that on both ends of that transverse gable, correct? Yep. Okay, so and the northeast yeah. elevation and also the uh, southwest elevation. And for placement, um, Paul, are you thinking that you would want the two by two windows centered over the washer and dryer? Well, it, I, I'm not sure exactly where that wall comes in the middle of that gable. Is it in the middle or is it off to one side? I'm looking it's at it a now. It's, seven, it's a little offset. It's like seven, six and just under six foot. So yeah. go, to, go to the floor plan. I'm thinking my, my suggestion would be to center it in the laundry room and then mirror that, that on, the, make, on the gable. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that would work. And so are, are we saying those are two by two windows with the heads at the same height as the other windows matching head height or were we saying taller? Uh, the uh, same head height as the headers in the other okay. windows. So held up. That's nice. I actually, I kind of love a window in a walk-in closet. Like, yeah, you know, I do too. Lighting. Natural light is really nice. It, it kind of, you know, it, it's a mm -hmm. balance between functionality and natural light, but it's it added value in my opinion. Okay, so I think that takes care of that one. Um, can, another thing, can you guys restate the change really quick so that I sure. understand? Add two window to add to add two windows to. Um, sorry, I'm trying, struggling to think about how to. You can say a, a window to the laundry room and a window and to a window the walk-in closet on the second yeah, floor. Symmetrical on the wall under the new gable. Yeah, symmetrical on that gable. So we're not moving the side window to the front. We're just adding one. I think the side window room. would be eliminated. Okay. So one per room and of any size? Of two, uh, two by two. Two by two. Okay. Two, two by two windows, one per room, one for laundry, one for Yeah, matching room. head height to all the other windows. And centered okay. on the table. And then if you do that, then I think the adding the vent detail, I would be comfortable with that being a suggestion rather I agree. than a condition because not seeing it, I don't know if we're going to make that over busy now. Yeah. yeah just one, one question. Is this area considered wooey? I think so. I think so. Well, Let's one thing I was wondering about that vent is if it's decorative, Paul, because in section three on A2.4, it looks like you've got exposed scissor truss it's probably going to be decorative and and mainly mainly because of the wooey situation right. yeah I, I don't want to have uh you know embers sneaking in right. even though mm -hmm. there are ways there are ways to uh deal with that and is everybody okay with the other window in the laundry room being removed i don't think yeah. the absolute symmetry is necessary I think it's yeah. fine for that to be removed and i i think that that could also be a suggestion if they're or inclined to keep it, but yeah, I think one is certainly enough for that room. Okay, so just I'm writing notes. So we're removing one window in the laundry area, right? Yeah, and if it's helpful, you can. Well, I guess they're they're called out as window type, not window number. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was going to tell you the window number, but that doesn't work. All right. I, I know over in the other neighborhood in Miramar, uh, my friend built a house on the end of Coronado and they made him do wooey up there. East side of Highway 1. Yeah, this is wooey for sure. Yeah, it's it's high high uh, fire severity. Okay, so then um, another question I had for the committee: Are are you guys both satisfied with the amount of um, interrupted eave, or do you have any concerns about the long eave line from that transverse gable to the front of the house on both sides? Uh, I don't think it concerns me. I, I feel like. This is broken up now with this new volume. Um, okay. To me, I, I, I also thought, I mean, not knowing, I think it looks uh, so much better than the original. So I think 
think it did meet our what we asked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the rest of my markups. Uh, okay, so Camille, can you go to uh, the previous sheet, please? And let's look at that bottom elevation. Um, so is this where you were talking about possibly adding steps to access the back, Greg? Or I'm sorry, um, Paul? Yes, yes. And, and, and in fact, if you move your uh, arrow to the left towards the front of the house. Above, yeah, there would obviously be some there as well. You know, maybe there's a potential to have an entry in that area. An so, entry to uh, the upper I unit? I don't have a control yet to the upper unit, correct. Which would also give you a chance to get to the backyard. It's just a thought. Um, so the reason I'm asking is because that kind of just a thought is the sort of thing that we have to capture and approve. You know, it's it's one of those things when you get out there and start grading and and look at how it sets up. There, there are sometimes you make changes at that point in time, but right now, as it, as it sits, I think it works the way it is. But it, it wouldn't be bad to have another secondary stairs to go to the backyard, wooden steps or something like that up in that area. Okay, I don't think we can review that without the details. So. I think we you can cover it as a minor modification request. Okay. Um, yeah, giving us more drawings and I'll, I'll take a look at that time. It has to meet that back. Okay. Um, so you can think about it during the planning commission too, Paul, because um, yeah. Anyway. Um, and are are we okay with like? you know, a verbal description of the door types for the entry door. I mean, I kind of felt like the garage door doesn't have quite enough detail. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention, that, and I think that that kind of caps my comments, um, was that the windows at the front um, have a whole bunch of divided lights and then none of the other windows have that detail. Mm. So from a consistency standpoint, that was kind of bothering yeah. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want to remove the grids? I think, is that a window? Um, is it a, it's, it's a three over or that would be a three part window. And, and personally, I don't like the grids because it interferes with the view. Yeah. Let's lose the grids, but there's still, there's like a, can you zoom in a little bit? Is, is that a window stacked on a, another window because the size is too big to be operable or is it a single home? It doesn't really show what the operation would be, but that is at a kitchen window. So it's worth noting that the counter height is as something to be considered. And the plan is showing dashed cabinets there, upper cabinets, and obviously there wouldn't be able to be any cabinets at the window. Yeah, I, I don't prefer the grids, but that, that would be three windows. I don't know if our intent was to have a, a opening awning type window at the bottom. I really, you know, unfortunately- I, I mean, I'm flexible and I just you see how it looks like there's more frame at the top uh, that it's not just the grids there's also like a, it looks like a the top pane is three Operable. three is yeah. three grids and then the bottom is like a separate one that's just one grid high is that a separate window and they're ganged together I I would say that the three three bottom windows or the three, four grid patterns right there that we should eliminate that and make sure we keep it up high enough to keep it over the countertop. So then we would just have the three windows that are right, that are being pointed to by the mouth there with no yeah, grids. And without, without grids, I get rid of the grids. Yeah, in and section, it doesn't show on. that being divided. I think it's better as one unit for each mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. And yeah. then I, I would agree with removing the grids. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Thanks for picking up the, the, the detail of those being the only good. Thing. Okay. We'll see daddy, please. I got socks. <laughs> uh, we have socks, exciting. Okay. And we're ruling by committee over there. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, my daughter just came back from school. Um, okay, <laughs> so I think that handles it for the windows there. And then as far as the door specification, like what are your guys thoughts on that? The garage door? Yeah, the garage door and the two entry doors on the side. Um, well, like the garage door feels like it's lacking a bit of detail to me for the architectural style. 
And if we're using the garage door as a style to match for the entry doors, yeah, I think yeah. it's worth discussing. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice, maybe nice to see something with like a shaker frame around each of those. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, just something that's a little bit more, you know, complementary to a sort of like a craftsman. And we should talk about the much. Is it like wood or is it metal? Well, it's, it's going to have to meet Wooey no matter what happens. And mm -hmm. it's hard to get a wood door these days. Yeah. Yeah, it's showing um, on the rendered elevation on A3O, it's showing it as sort of a different color that isn't really mm -hmm. called out in the material legend. I agree with you that some more detail would be nice. So if it's painted, that's fine. I, I would like to see it, yeah, with this sort of shaker frame around each one of those panels and then to see shaker doors at the entry also, or at least something not just like a plain slab door. Yeah. And I agree. I think that that would be consistent. But Camille, are you okay with being able to have us be a little bit, you know, just descriptive on yeah. the style and then you can kind of make sure yeah. that it's appropriate. We yeah. could say like craftsman or shaker style uh recessed panel doors. Okay. And then we could say that the garage door should be similar in style to the entry doors if we want to do it that way. Oh the detail sheets are in here. They're not on the uh the schedule. Okay. So the detail actually is in this set, even though it's not in the sheet index. Um, it's like two sheets down. Detail oh, yeah. um, and then the ventilation detail, we might want to just, well, we should capture that this will be a decorative vent because they're showing it kind of as like a real vent. Um, Say that again? The the vent detail, two sheets down, sheet 29. Which one? 29. Oh, 29. Um... Okay. So there's that, and then the deck detail is also there. Okay. So okay. we've got something that's captured as far as the planning approval. Oh, yeah. Um, so we can reference that with the um, detail okay. two yeah. on twenty nine O for the guardrail to match that detail. Okay. Um, and I just I just wanted to mention one, well, two other things, and it's more for planning staff uh, and a little bit for the applicant. Uh, the demonstration of scale, these renderings. Um, this is sort of an example of the problem that we've been running into with demonstrations of scale because there's no context at all with these renderings. So it's actually not giving a demonstration of scale in my opinion. Um, so that's worrisome. Like this house has a house on the right hand side and you know that's not really accurately reflected. You don't see grade. Like this would have been more successful to me if it was a photo montage with a photograph of the site. Um, and in that case, that's where it feels more like a demonstration of scale. Um, so I just wanted to mention that because the demonstration of scale is obviously an ongoing issue and discussion. And this is exactly mm. the problem that I see with renderings in lieu of story poles. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to mention that I've been seeing a lot of drawings come through that basically have all the construction details in them. Um, and, you know, it that's, that's, it's fine to have all of that worked out already or to have those as standard details, but it, it becomes a little bit difficult for us having to navigate like a 31 sheet PDF when a lot of those sheets are not necessarily relevant to uh, the design review application. So it would be really great if, if the planners could ask the applicants to pare down the sheets and the sets to the ones that are required for design review. I would agree. Like it's just, it's tough. Like we end up sometimes going through 20 sheets before we even get to floor plans or elevations. Yeah, like this one could have been left out. Probably. Yeah, there's there's been a couple okay. other projects recently that were like 40 or 50 pages. And you yeah. know, it's a lot to have to go back and forth through. Yeah. You know, you know how to install. Yeah. <laughs> so Glenn, let's note that um, at the next staff meeting about detail pages and then also making sure that the demonstration of scale includes other buildings because then it doesn't really demonstrate scale to Katie's point. Okay. Yeah, like the irrigation sheets, a lot of times we'll end up with a whole bunch of irrigation details from the irrigation designer. And I don't know, that might be something for the planners to, to let me know if that's relevant to how they review the project or if it's mainly the plans. But, you know, having all the irrigation details and things like that, it just becomes a little bit, you know, tedious to get through all those sheets to find what we're supposed to be reviewing for our purview. Yep, got it. Okay. That's noted.
that's it for me. I'm pretty long winded. Sorry. <laughs> Good. Well, I think we've I think we've captured a lot, and um, so it sounds like just just to circle back to to my question about the extension of the projection into the side. Um, Katie and Linda, he's staying over the five foot minimum. Is that sufficient for you guys? Or do you, I was, I was a little bit waiting to see if any neighbors showed up to complain. Um, and since they haven't, I feel less concerned about it, but did want to ask. The no, I, I think it's actually an improvement. And as I recall, I think that was actually a suggestion from us because it kind of keeps the project from being too long and tall and skinny. Yeah, that yeah. If they were already applying for a use permit, yeah, you know, the, it was the one in the thing I was expecting right. them to do a little bit differently. Yes, I, thought. Yes. I wasn't imagining they were going to go this far, but I think that um, since I had S17 in my mind, I was thinking of trying to to keep to to that 15. But since that's not the district we're in and we're already in the use permit, mm -hmm. I agree with you. I, mean, I think it's amazing that you were able to convert what you had to a two bedroom ADU down there. So that's that's a big enhancement mm -hmm. for the community. Yeah, that my only thought was, you know, when we made that initial suggestion, I was thinking that the part they would push out would be specifically the ADU because ADUs have different setbacks anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they've expanded the footprint of the unit above also. But, you know, I think that um, a lot of our concerns have been addressed. And I, I really appreciate that because a lot of times we see a very minimal effort. Yeah. Um, and I do think that the project might seem a little bit unbalanced if it wasn't coming you know, up done quite this way so I think well and also it's not like there's a big privacy concern from you know your walk-in closet to your neighbor there is that window out of the bedroom but I think it's fine yeah right yeah so um, that was um, my thinking is that I think that we had actually encouraged them since they were already having to get a use permit mm -hmm. anyway to explore you know widening the footprint of it one of our um bullet points did say reduce setbacks uh, it says there, there's already a use permit for this project, so the reduced mm -hmm. setback would be part of the use permit to allow for more articulation. So we asked for that. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's 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 more than I was envisioning in my mind. Yeah. Um, if you guys are are not concerned about it, I'm I'm good with it. I think I agree. I'm okay with in general, it. It's very much responded to our feedback and very much improved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Paul. Uh, sorry, I keep calling. You. Yeah, I was just, I was going to call you, Greg, again, Paul. Um, are you okay with the garage doors and the two front doors actually being the color that matches the trim? Uh, you know, it it, it could. It, it looks it, like a contrasting it, color, but we don't have a color specification called out on A3.0. You know, it, it's something, a light white is fine, but not a, I, I can't even see the thing on the uh, plans right here. It's, it's probably a Benjamin Moore color. Um, are, know, are which, you looking at the the screen that Camille is sharing? What what suggestion do you have in mind? Um, I just, I mean, I'm okay with it being a contrasting color, but we would need to have that color selection. I mean, if you want to have that same trim color, the Chantilly lace, and have it be two shades darker or something, but we just have to have that captured. No, leave leave it like like it is right now. Well, it's not called out. Oh, it is, I thought it was. I I can't read it on this. Oh yeah, the, the trim color is called out, but graphically, the, the doors look different than the trim color. Okay. No, it, it would be the same color as the, uh, the color that's called out. Okay. Right. So let's make sure we capture that in the letter, Linda. Okay. Chantilly it's, lace. It's chantilly lace or something? Well, yeah, easy. just to match the trim color, yeah. chantilly lace. Yeah. For garage door. Okay. okay. And then the railing would also be painted that color. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> we'll capture that as well. Okay. Railing. Okay. So um, I have a couple of questions about what we're, um, we're, we're calling out here. Okay. So when we're done, I'd like to go through that. Um, and maybe typically don't we, um, when we vote to approve, don't we um, call out all these things? Uh, sometimes, but sometimes we'll say something like, you know, we're recommending this project for approval based on all of the changes as discussed. Okay. Because mm -hmm. there is a record, you know, people can get a recording of it, and then we try to capture everything in the letter as well. Okay. And could um, could I ask for Rebecca and, K and Katie for you to just stay on for another oh, three yeah. minutes while we just formulate this so we're not doing all that back, back and forth email? Yeah. Great. Yeah. That'd be super. Okay, are we ready to um, 
Does any, do, 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 one of you makes a motion, right? Well, I guess we need to ask Paul. Paul. Yeah. Oh. Um, do you want me to do it so that you can? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you do it? Do it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, Paul, at this point, we would like to ask if you would like the committee to make a vote or if you would like to request a continuance to address some of the concerns that have been discussed. Uh, yes, please go ahead and vote. Okay, the applicant has requested a vote. Okay, uh, would someone like to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve the project conditional upon um, the conditions we've discussed, which we can outline if we need to be more specific. I'll second that. Okay, I'll do a roll call. Uh, Linda Patterson? Yes, approved. Rebecca Gacken? Yes. Katie Costi? Yes. Okay, uh, motion passed. Okay. Paul, do you want to stay on to hear us detail these, or do you think you've got a pretty good handle of what we've discussed? Oh, no, I'll stay on. So if, if you have any questions, you know, as, as far as you want a condition, I can listen in. Okay. And, and just curious, are you guys down to three members right now? Uh, well, we try to do three for each project review, but there's okay. not three. So there's basically, there's two architects and one community representative for each project. I see. I see. But we are recruiting for more members. So if yeah. you know anybody who wants to participate. Oh, we... it's and in Montera. Wait, so Paul is a San Gregorio now, don't you? Well, I'm, I'm kind of in between Miramar oh, okay. and Gregorio. Yeah, or oh, you okay. might even know people in your communities that where you're building that are interested or have taken interest as you've engaged the public. Hey, you guys, while you hash that out, um, I, I also just, we need to figure, I, I think we're just running the meeting long. It's still being recorded. Uh, if a member jumps on, they could hear all your discussions. So just wanted to give you a heads up about that. Yeah, yeah. So there shouldn't be any more discussion after, I mean, a vote's been taken. So, so should, I mean, we not, just, should we just sign off and then continue talking about what these actual conditions are? Like stop the recording, like end the meeting, and then we can continue talking. Yeah, but the link's still live. But anyway, it should, it should probably still be fine. I think we're just well, going to reiterate the things we've said you know, for Linda. Yeah, just don't, don't, so don't change anything. No. Change anything. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I'm going to hop off, but I'll wait for Linda's letter uh, next okay, week. Yeah. Okay, because I have to pick up my son. But um, thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thanks, Thanks Camille. Camille. You, okay, bye. Thank, thank you, ladies, for making this a better project. I, it was it was really good to have your input. Happy holiday, Camille. Yes, happy holidays, everyone. Holidays. Thank you so much, Linda, for coming. Okay, mm -hmm. talk to you later, Paul. Okay, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank okay, you so, Paul. It's always nice to get that kind of feedback when we, you know, well, try to you help know, a project. You guys did a great job, and, you know, my architect can only do so much. And it's always nice to have more input. Yeah, just more feedback. Okay, so um, what I I wrote some very sloppy notes, but here the first thing is sheets number thirty and thirty one are removed, um, and I think those were the old plans, the old landscape plans or something. Right. Um, I could make the suggestion, which I brought up, of the Cianothus Julia Phelps um, as a specimen for the front, and that's just a, a suggestion. Okay. Okay, so now in terms of guardrail, let's see. We did, let me go to the ones I know for sure. We're doing the Chantilly lace um, color for garage door and also for the railing uh, back of project. The and the two, the two entry doors. And two entry doors, okay. Two entry doors, okay. We're, we're um, asking for craftsman or shaker style for the side doors and also the garage. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, remove grids from window above garage, southeast elevation. Were we also, was that window also going to be raised a little bit? Yes, we're also raising the sill. I think what we would, we're actually saying is that you would eliminate the bottom row of grids okay. like we would eliminate the window at the bottom row of grids and eliminate the grids at the windows above that line bottom. right and say coordinate sill height with kitchen counter height okay coordinate and grid okay 
Um, uh, did we talk about the vent? Was that a was that one of them? The vent detail. I think that's a suggestion, not a condition, to add the decorative vent detail to the new smaller gable. Okay. Okay. And then, um, and then the condition was around the windows in that gable. Okay. To gable. Yeah. So if it's helpful, the the suggestion of the decorative uh, gable vent would be at the northeast elevation. Okay. Gable. All right. And the southwest elevation gable. And southwest, okay. And then the southwest elevation gable is the one where we were having, as a condition, the two by two windows. Okay, so that's a condition we were going to do two by yes, two. Yes, eliminating windows. the window on the side of the laundry room and replacing it with two two foot by two foot square windows. Symmetrical on the gable piece. Symmetrically on the gable with their head heights matching the other heads on that wall, on that level. Okay, that's a lot for me to write. Let's see. Eliminate okay. window side. What what side are we talking about? This is the southwest elevation gable. Southwest elevation. Okay. <laughs> okay. Eliminate the. You can uh, say eliminate window in laundry room. In laundry room. Okay, and then two, let's see, two by two windows, um, and then and then add, right? We're yeah. adding? Yep. Two by two windows. Um, on the southwest elevation gable. On southwest elevation gable, okay. And you could say symmetrical on the gable peak. Okay, elevation. And, and sorry to keep adding, but make sure that you include that the head height is to match the existing head height for that elevation. Existing head height on that elevation, okay. Okay, add two by two windows on southwest elevation gable. Um, and a matching head height on on that elevation. Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And was there anything else? Let's see. Yeah, the patio. We just want to kind of patio. We needed to do the. That'll be a little tougher verbiage, but we'll guardrail. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me go guardrail for back patio. Um, but but we were matching because it's already uh, depicted in sheet two. Dash zero, right? Yeah, so I think we need to say something like um, reconsider grading at rear patio to determine location of guardrail if required. Reconsider grading rear patio. Um, reconsider grading rear patio. Um, what was the next part? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> uh, reconsider grading at rear patio uh, to determine if guardrail will be required. Okay. And then the second sentence would say, if required, guardrail to match detail, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Specifications. Okay. Two dash zero. Okay, so let's see if we have everything else. The guardrail. Um, and I could say reconsider grading grading to keep within eighteen inches, right? Uh, well, you could say. Um, I mean, it's actually thirty inches is the height that triggers a guardrail, but. Um, I think we probably don't need to get into that too much. It'll get okay. picked up in plan check, but it's a balance between uh, grading quantities, rotating wall height, and the fall height for a guardrail. Okay. Two by two windows. Okay, so we've got the windows, we've got the guardrail, the front window, the door <laughs> style, and the paint. I think that was it. Yeah, I think that captures everything. Paint door style, raising um, yeah, raising the sill. 
Windows. And, and we'll obviously help review it before. And I'll, I'll it write it up and then send it to you both. Okay. okay. Thank you for helping. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'm signing yeah. off. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. So uh, I think we've got actually well, like, uh, I'd like to make a motion to end the meeting. I'll second that. Okay, I'll do a roll call. Um, Linda Patterson? Yes. Rebecca Kakin? Yes. Katie Kostik? Yes. Beverly Garrity? Yes. Mark Stackwire? I don't know if you say, oh, there is. Yes. No? Oh. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll just mark Mark as uh, not present at the moment. Okay. Um, yeah, we can end the meeting and now I'll see you next year. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Happy holiday, everyone. Thank you, Linda. Linda, I just wanted to yes. thank you for your expertise and your time today. It's really appreciated. Oh, oh thank you. Thanks for all the help you, you give me. And Paul, thanks for uh, the